Hello and welcome to the Video Lab podcast. My name is Sam and I'm here with my good friend AJ. Hey there. Together we review movies, TV shows, and streaming content. On today's wonderful podcast episode, we have a wonderful podcast guest known as Jacob. Hello. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. What is it you want, Barry? You, you want the moon? I yes. want the truth! I see dead people. You shall not pass! You'll shoot your eye out, kid. This is Sparta! I am your father. Let us fight to free the world, to do away with greed, with hate and intolerance. Let us all unite! <laughs> Epic next chapter in the cinematic monster verse pits two of the greatest icons in motion picture history against one another, the fearsome Godzilla and the mighty Kong, with humanity caught in the balance. So yeah, I actually Oh, go ahead, Jacob. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Hey, Jay. No, no I want to I want to hear Jacob's thoughts. I do this. You I'm know, new, I, I talk. I'm very new to this. I... <laughs> yeah, we want to get your thoughts. We the, the audience knows my thoughts on things and they want they want to hear what Jacob has to say. OK, so I need actually some explanation. So this is maybe a good handoff back to AJ. Uh, I didn't understand how and maybe I was just on my phone or something and not paying attention. But I don't know how the whole home in the center of hollow earth because I I caught the whole scene where this, you know, mad scientist guy had this theory, uh, but I really was thrown off by how they all of a sudden had an established base in Antarctica with a perfect tunnel that goes right to uh, the center of the hollow earth. Yeah. The hollow earth thing, I think plot wise, it's one of the more interesting elements of the story. So like the whole gist of this is that they were doing these experiments, quote unquote, scientists somewhere were just exploring, like getting down to the center of the earth, because apparently I forget how they explained they figured this out, but they they had this theory that all the monsters that are what, what are they called? Um, apex predators or titans. That's what it is. Yeah. All the titans come from the center of the earth uh, in like a, a bunch of ecosystems. I don't really know how they established these bases. I don't know if the other movies covered this because this is part of this movie is part of what is now officially dubbed the MonsterVerse, uh, where they link like King Kong up with Godzilla and kind of tie these movies together with regulars and kind of they're basically trying to do a Marvel Cinematic Universe thing in miniature form. But Jacob's got a point. Like, why did they have to go to the center of the earth with Kong? Boy, let me think about that. I actually don't remember. <laughs> it's a real barn burner question. Well, I think Kong, because Kong was very unhappy in his giant arena. I know now. Okay, go. They wanted Kong to lead them down there and to lead them to places of value inside the the, the center of the earth. But why? The evil people wanted to mine the like super energy crystal thing that you saw the robots make their own animals or something, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, because they were wanting an energy source to power up Mecha Godzilla properly, which is one of the dumbest <laughs> <laughs> yeah. enemies I think I remembered a movie in quite a while. So I, I've seen Godzilla stuff before, and I've had friends that have been into Godzilla, and so I thought the Mecha Godzilla shit was kind of cool. Jacob, your thoughts? Well, I just liked when uh, Mecha Godzilla made his first appearance. That's Robo Godzilla. No, that's that's Mecha Godzilla. It's Mecha Godzilla. <laughs> I know that was so cheesy. <laughs> no, you idiot. It's Mecha. <laughs> <laughs> that This movie has loads of cheese. Oh, my yeah. God. There, there's lots of dialogue like that. 
all the human elements of this movie are uninteresting, forgettable, boring, cliche, cheesy. Like none of these characters are that interesting. All their side stories and and like drama are just so I don't care. I mean, you name <laughs> either of you can either of you name any of the characters like the human characters' names? No, no. Which is fine. I think it doesn't. You don't have to really care about the characters at all. It's whether or not you really appreciate the action of Godzilla versus Kong in the end. Yeah, and that's. That's the whole point of this movie, and I don't think it's trying to do anything else. Is It's an action Godzilla flick, and these movies are made to be... Like, they know what they're doing. They're just, they're just monster battle scenes. The thing I'll say about Mecha Godzilla is that I think they did it for two reasons. Number one, I think they are just kind of running out of stuff for them to fight. Because the, in the last Godzilla movie, Godzilla fought Ghadira, the three-headed dragon, which is arguably like the strongest monster in the monster verse. He's not, but that'll be a discussion for another time. <laughs> okay. Oh, hey there, AJ. I thought I'd take another little break here to prove to you that upon further investigation, Ghadira actually is one of the strongest monsters that Godzilla has ever fought. Technically, the answer is King Ghadira, who is bigger, badder, and stronger than any other kaiju Godzilla has fought, but I'm still going to count that as a win. As I'm looking at this here, the other strongest monsters that fought Godzilla are... Number two, Mothra. Number three, King Ghadira. Number four, Mechagodzilla. And five, something called Destroya. So, take that, my good sir. And then number two, they just need to like, they needed something in the movie to unify the message where it's like, who is the true apex predator of Earth? Is it Kong? Is it Godzilla? Or is it humans? And that's why they had the whole stupid, we need to build this to be better than Godzilla, who's already keeping us safe. I think the whole Mecha Godzilla thing is about humanity's hubris, and they what they the the bad guys in this movie are mad that Godzilla is the Titan apex of the planet. Which isn't that so dumb though? I know. Well, that's that's the hubris. Is they're like, no, 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 you can't be a top dog defending us. We have to defend ourselves because what if Godzilla turns bad? It's a very like human nuclear war concept of like we must have our own nukes, you know? Right. I also saw a little motif in there of like kind of humans and AI because with, you know, when Mechagodzilla kind of went and did his own thing, I was kind of like, oh, that's, you know, it's kind of along the lines of what everyone's talking about with, you know, like the Elon Musk stuff. I was real, real confused at how Mechagodzilla worked. The whole thing with the skull of... That was Ghadira. Oh, that was Ghadira? Yeah, that was one of his skulls, I think. So they were, but why were they needing that skull to control Mechagodzilla? I think it had like something of the DNA or like the magical beast juices so associated with it. Yeah, I yeah, it, it didn't pass the smell test for me. It, it seemed a bit. <laughs> it's, <laughs> well, technically, it's a skull, so it probably doesn't smell. So well, it probably would smell. I'm gonna be real with you. Yeah, um, very bony. And I'm gonna be real with you. You're wrong. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Not now, boys. <laughs> I will pose an uh, interesting plot hole that I think, because uh, I for this type of movie, I try to ignore a lot of the big plot oh, holes. I bet I know what you're thinking, because I, I have a big... Okay. Jacob, tell me if you agree, too. Okay. They decided to get to Antarctica, to get to the center of the Earth, to hollow Earth. They decided to take <laughs> Kong on a boat, and then when the boats are all destroyed, they're like, let's just fly him there. Why didn't you do that from the beginning and avoid Godzilla's attack overall? <laughs> Right. Well, if he's going across the ocean, that'd be a lot of fuel. I mean, logistically, it wouldn't be that easy. Yeah, that was a lot of helicopters. It was a lot of helicopters. And that would be it a lot cool. of fueling in flight. Woo! Jeez, I can smell him from up here. Well, he can smell you, too. Mm. They use a light touch on the sedatives. He's our escort. We can't have him comatose when we reach Hollow Earth. What if Kong doesn't go willingly? What do you do then? Dr. Lind, please report to the forward deck. Dr. Lind. I will say that the whole thing, putting Kong on a boat thing was dumb, but it set up the really cool battle between him and Godzilla underwater and stuff. That was a cool, that was a cool fight. I left everything else aside. There was a lot of human casualties there. That, that oh my God, that's all I could think about this whole movie. Is, yeah, in the cities and stuff. we wiped out like a fourth of our population in this movie. Yeah, lots of human casualties <laughs> delivering these monsters around. Yeah. I bet there's someone on YouTube that's done like a body kill count for this movie. It's got to be in like 
stuff. Well, for sure, the thousands. Most of it you wouldn't see because it's like a building being sliced in half and you don't yeah, know. Yeah, but if you just do like general estimates of, you know, how many people are in a building at any given time. Okay. I'm sure someone could. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it has to be, let's see, I'm going to do an estimate and there's nothing that could possibly back this up. I'm going to guess 100,000 maybe. Yeah, that seems right. I probably oh, more I, honestly. I would guess way more than that. I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine being in like one of those skyscraper buildings and watching the whole fight take place? You're just like doing tax reports, like doo, 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 doo. oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> and then it's almost over, and Kong just like is about to sit down and put his hand on a building, <laughs> and you're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you make it through the whole fight. Yeah, that'd be yeah, and like Godzilla's laser thing too with his mouth That's ridiculous. Um, just yeah. shreds everywhere so this is what i thought you were gonna say sam uh the thing that like really took me out of this movie was when so kong does some sort of activation thing in the core in the center of the earth i don't really he puts the axe in the in its slot right and godzilla apparently senses that and he uses his laser breath to blast a hole from the surface of the earth down to the center <laughs> right. of the earth, right. which I had to Google, but I don't know if you guys know this, but it, the from the surface to the center of the earth is 1,800 miles. <laughs> so Godzilla blasted 1,800 miles through rock to get down to the, the that point in the, in the center of the earth, which I thought was dumb enough already. But then Kong climbs up that hole he races 1800 miles up this <laughs> <Yeah>. hole <laughs> to, to join the fight and <laughs> i i understand why like it it was a neat shortcut so that kong didn't have to go up that stupid antarctic hole again but it was <laughs> so so dumb <laughs> like yeah. he was probably exhausted that's why he got his butt kicked I mean, the, basically, the physics and the science in this movie are just completely out the window, and they're just like, you know, enjoy the action and two massive monsters beating each other up. Also, with the Hollow Earth thing, I, I think it's like an interesting concept for like, an origin story for monsters. I'm like, oh, that's neat. But then what? Lava just doesn't exist in this world? Like, <laughs> like, well, I don't understand. Like, I wish someone would dabble at that a bit. That's what I was going to say. I would think that like the lava between the different, not even the center of the earth, between the center of the earth and other layers of earth would be like smolting out or the gravitational balance of our planet would be thrown off because of this. <laughs> yeah, there's I, it just... There's no lava in this universe, apparently, because there's no other way than any of this would really make sense. No, we're just a giant rock shell, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the action sequences specifically. Let's talk about the boat sequence first. What did you guys like about that and what did you not like at all? I like that it was out of Kong's element and it was Godzilla's element. He's a he's a sea critter, so he you know could, could really took take advantage of Kong. He tried to drown him, and he was he would have been successful had the humans not intervened. So I thought it was a a creative fight that I have not seen in a monster movie before. Yeah, yeah, it definitely gave you the feeling that like Kong was in a lot of trouble. I guess a more general comment though is I did think they did a really good job of just making both Kong and particularly Kong feel just massive in this movie, which I think I read somewhere that he actually proportionally is more massive in this movie than previous ones. I think that's probably true. Just the animations were so awesome. And I loved every time that he would just have those primal, you know, Kong outbursts. Oh yeah. Where he's just going full Kong mode on people and that that was yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, I give major props to all the, the animators and compositors and everything because all of the fight stuff didn't feel as crazy as the animals are in this that are made up. It didn't feel unrealistic. Every punch felt like, Jesus, like a major earthquake punch to you know either Godzilla or Kong's face. Just the way they use their environments too to fight where Kong is jumping between the boats where it's kind of, oh yeah, he's in the jungle again. Or Godzilla, like AJ said, he's swimming through and just spiking all the boats with his back or dragging Kong down. It's a very weird thought to have, but before I watched this movie, I'm like, ugh, I like hesitated because I, I was like, oh, I don't want to see animals fight each other because I hate seeing animals fight, but <laughs> these are like made up things, but I still had that thought run through my head. Well, I will say that uh, the audience is definitely kind of made to feel more, a lot more sympathy for Kong as like a, a humanoid figure and Godzilla is more kind of like the cold blooded guy. 
Yeah. You know, especially with that little girl who's got the attachment to Kong. We did. Did we're you guys like made. the little girl? That whole motif thing? That was my favorite motif because all the other side motifs just were forgettable, you know. But at least that kind of linked things together with how Kong was communicating with the humans and everything. I did think it was ridiculous that so Kong was in that containment center being monitored 24 seven, but it was apparently a surprise that this girl and Kong were communicating in sign language. Yeah. I didn't buy it. Oh, AJ, don't ruin the magic. <laughs> oh. Like everyone was shocked. Like what? <laughs> yeah. I see your point, but I also really like the way the review that like it's in the rain. She's deaf. I like the whole her being deaf and they have to communicate through, through sign language. So just her on the boat, this little tiny figure against this giant beast that could kill her in like a little pinch. And she's like, calm down. It'll be fine. And the rain is all around her and it's silent. I thought it was really cool. Like it made me feel some emotion there. Yeah, I think she's the only human character that really does that in this movie. I, I don't really care about anyone else. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, no one else has a, a remotely interesting story. <laughs> yeah. The whole side hustle thing of them trying to find out like what's really going on with me or then they find yeah. Godzilla. That was like comedic relief more or less. It was comedic relief and it wasn't very good comedic relief. <laughs> the podcast guy was cute, but again... <laughs> Did you like him? Yeah. Oh, are you talking to Jacob? I just making sure he's talking to the right person because I I gave my thoughts. I thought he th- I I thought he was cute. I thought he was a fun character. I'm sorry, Jacob. He's doing it again. If I mean, if you want to leave, you can leave. <laughs> yeah, I'm out of here. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, I yeah, I, I thought he was fine. I I wasn't. I don't know. I wasn't totally sold on his character. I thought he was a little, just a little off, maybe. I got what they were going for, but... You want to know my theory? I mean, of course you do. That's why you're here. Come on. It's all about patterns and variables. All right, stick with me. I'm going to take you back to sixth grade with this, okay? Godzilla attacks when provoked. That's the pattern. Pensacola is the only coastal apex hub with an advanced robotics lab. That's the variable. And add them up, and your answer is... That apex is at the heart of the problem. It felt like the maybe you know what it was is that the part of it was the time placement from the first Godzilla attack where the black guy is there trying to steal information. Also, why? Oh wait, oh yeah, the you're talking about the the podcast guy, right? Yeah, yeah, he's there to he's trying to figure out what they're doing. But the time jump between that attack and then Millie Bobby Brown's character and the other dorky kid finding him was like a weird time jump. Oh, you think so? I don't know. I, f- I thought it was kind of weird. It was like a week or something. Uh, I, again, I think we could, just could have reduced that quite a bit and just focus on more fighting stuff. But on the one hand, I think most. So this is a two hour movie and all this exposition to like set up Kong and Godzilla in the monster verse, I think is pretty, again, boring and bad. But you don't want a movie that's just a bunch of fights. You know, it would be really hollow even more than it already is. Yeah. You want to make it shine. Yeah. And it just, you know. They need exposition, I think. It just wasn't very good exposition. So, I guess question, because I've never seen a Kong vs. Godzilla movie before. Well, they've only gone head-to-head this one time. And oh, so, really? Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. In that case. You, th- you thought it was like the rematch? <laughs> yeah. I, this was like a re- I just figured this would be a remake for some reason. They, they've done... So, let's explain better. So, they've done se- one or two Kong movies. There's two Kong movies. The, in, of the newer style. Yes. Actually, like with this version yeah. of Kong. Actually, maybe only even one. Because Peter Jackson did the ones previous. The two thousand. That was the two thousand one. And I, yeah. Me... Um. And then there's I think two or three sing like Godzilla movies before this. Yep. There. Are. But this is the first time that Godzilla and Kong are actually in the same movie, and they're making that like monster verse come together. Sam, don't want to uh, drop a bomb here, but nineteen sixty three. Oh God! Yeah. Shoot. You're right. What do you mean? Uh, what? That <laughs> was <laughs> the original matchup between the two. Oh, th- this is a remake, kind of? Okay, so they did this once upon a time. Somebody at work was mentioning this to me, and they're like, yeah, I remember going to this way back in the day. And I'm like, oh really? my God. <laughs> <laughs> Who was could it forget Claymation? The- uh, oh, it, it would oh, be you bad. You guys need to look this up. This is hilarious. <laughs> it's King Kong versus Godzilla with 1963 special. I'm going to look it up quick. It's got, I bet it's Claymation. Oh no! This is this is worse. This is guys in suits. Oh, is that's, it? Really? That's 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 how they that's how they did these movies. <laughs> oh, dude, what the heck? They have Kong being dropped in on by with airplanes too in this movie. Oh, interesting. Oh my god, the eyes on this are creepy. Yeah, they probably borrowed. You know that makes sense. Uh, you know because they 
I mean, they made a lot of Godzilla movies. <laughs> Dude, they just drop Kong onto the ground flat onto his ass from the airplanes or these balloons. <laughs> Jesus, he probably broke his tailbone from that. Poor monkey. What, so what was your original question, Jacob? Okay, so I, guess, I guess I just lack all context as far as, you know, this whole Titan multiverse thing. So for, for me, just to clarify, so like all these things came from the center of the earth and they just randomly pop up on the surface every once in a while and fight each other. Is that kind of like the general... Over our here. That's what they, and I don't know how well that was developed in other movies. It seemed pretty new to me. I, I, I don't think I've heard of this in a Godzilla movie before. Um, I think this Hollow Earth thing was relatively new, but maybe there's an expert out there who's like, no, they introduced this in 1975. 63. <laughs> Let's talk about then the second fight scene because that was the most major one at the end where Mecha Godzilla emerges. I thought for as cheesy as the plot was with Mecha Godzilla, they did a fantastic job, like we said earlier, animating him and doing all the super sweet weapon systems on him. And the fact that, you know, Godzilla, I guess even before this, we see, don't, didn't Godzilla and Kong fight for a second time with the axe and everything? Yeah, that was in the city, though. I was a little surprised that Kong got his ass whooped so hard again the second time, but I really liked at the end of that fight where Godzilla is just scraping his chest with its claws. <laughs> it's like, oh, Jesus. Wait, no, there there was an earlier fight because yeah, Kong it was like one time. Oh, yeah. It was in another city and Kong bested Godzilla. And Even he, with the axe. Yeah. No, no, no. Godzilla bested Kong a second time with the axe. And then God, or Kong came back at the very end to help save Godzilla from Mecha Godzilla. So the first round on the boats went to Godzilla. Yes. The second round went to Kong because he no. used that axe and crushed Godzilla. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Where remember was he the like second fight though. It was in that was like nighttime city. Yeah. It was in Hong yeah. Kong, I think. Yeah. Okay. No, Godzilla destroyed Kong again and almost killed him. And then they had to shock Kong back to life. No, remember? dude, you're confusing that with the third fight. That's the last fight. Yeah. Which also was kind of weird to me, but <laughs> Yeah, that was very funny. They gotta get a defibrillator. <laughs> well, they like literally like exploded something on his chest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally scrolling through the movie right now to prove you wrong. No, dude. Uh, yeah, I'm totally right. We can we can come back to the second fight, but the third fight. Yeah, but I, I want Sam to understand that there are indeed three <laughs> fights. And because they, they had it like a boxing match where first yeah. one Godzilla, second one Kong, third Godzilla. So like Godzilla comes out on top in the end here okay also i found it funny that uh godzilla was able to punch so well <laughs> it's got little tiny arms i kind of imagined him to have like t-rex arms but he was throwing haymakers at Kong. yeah <laughs> and he he fights dirty too he like scratches and bites and yeah didn't godzilla take kong's face and smash it or no i think kong took godzilla's face and smashed into a building they they beat on each other pretty good yeah this just do can you imagine the render time it took to to get all these visual effects output with that much damage happening to those buildings oh yeah, yeah. that'd be be quite the editing project god damn i'm still trying to find this to make sure i'm right yeah, he comes okay he looks around yep he breathes fire on him he goes at him with the axe okay here we go then there's a big explosion between him and Godzilla. Okay, now they're fighting one more time. Kong slamming him into buildings. We're getting near the end. Fuck yeah, I'm going to be right. Here we go. I don't think so. Godzilla dude. just pushed him into a building. Kong's arm is hurt. And then, oh, fuck yeah, I'm right. Godzilla goes on top of Kong, roars, and is smashing Kong's chest in and ripping it up with his foot. Then they growl at each other, and then Godzilla goes away. Oh, this fuck is you, that AJ. No, wait, was that? I am literally watching the scene right now. I, I do remember this now that you... And then Colin driving. falls back down at the end. No, the, what happened in the third fight? The third fight is when... The third fight, Kong comes in later. Because at that point, Mechagodzilla is activated and Kong has to get the heart thing put on him to come back to life and help Godzilla. 
but yeah, but God's the reason why Kong needs that is because he got his butt kicked by Godzilla again. in the second fight. Oh, so you're lumping the second and third fight together? Yeah. So I think you're. I don't know. I, I feel yeah, like I'm, you're I'm looking at the there. transition right now. Don't worry, audience. They're all going to be attentively listening a, to this. I'm not. A, I'm not on HBO right now. Okay. But I really yeah. Want see, to. they do. They do a time jump between the second fight where Kong falls down and he's got his chest basically kicked in by Godzilla after the big roar. Godzilla goes away. Mecha Godzilla gets reactivated. And it's like a time jump to daytime now. And then Mecha Godzilla and Godzilla fight. Godzilla is going to basically die. But Kong comes back and helps kick his ass. Are there really only... No, there's three fights. Okay, but each time in the first two, Godzilla wins? Yes. Okay. All right. I feel like pretty good right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Sam, you got to... Because you, gotta... you guys were very confident I was wrong. I was pretty sure because remember he had like, he like charged up that axe and like just pounded on Godzilla. Yeah. I mean, he kicked him in the butt a little bit, but then Godzilla destroyed him at he the end. He came back the though, crunch. huh? Yeah, I guess I'm. I, I guess I'm like kind of melding these together. I guess you're I, not a very good movie reviewer. No, I'm not. I, I messed this up. Jacob, your thoughts on AJ's ability to review movies? Yeah, <laughs> horrific. Yeah, uh, B plus. Yeah, Jacob's a relentless critic of my grading system. So <laughs> <laughs> every hey. episode, the past couple episodes, we've had AJ's grading. We've system had it, yeah, we've on. had extensive discussions about my grading. <laughs> and if you had to put money down on Godzilla versus Kong or even let's do this let's do Kong versus Mecha Godzilla versus Godzilla who are you going to bet on dude Godzilla all day yeah Godzilla was just made to be the superior titan for sure but your heart was with Kong the whole time yep exactly but exactly honestly Mecha Godzilla was pretty beastly like i feel like Mecha Godzilla one on one could take either of them I, at one point when they were fighting i i, I felt like they should have had the line of like <laughs> He was only designed to fight one, <laughs> you know, you know, because <laughs> one on one, he was supposed to kick anyone's butt. But yeah, I, I would if it was a one on one, I would put money on Mecha Godzilla almost. Yeah. Yeah. He definitely he's got the tools for it, man. He yeah. did like even his design. It didn't look cheesy once i saw his like laser breath and everything. It looked raw, man. He looked like a machine, like an actual machine. Yeah. I think if he had he looked fatter, almost like Godzilla looks, I think it would have been a little stupid. And that's how Mecha Godzilla looks in like the older movies and cartoons. Did any of the guys in the theater you were watching this with Jacob let out like a ooh or like oh yeah? <laughs> well, as I recall, there were two couples in front of me and then one dad with his three sons. And I think one of the sons did do a few fist pumps. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely was saying stuff from the couch. So I feel like, yeah, this would have been really cool to see with a big audience in theaters because it would have been like a Marvel movie where people are shouting and careening. All right. Well, you guys have any final thoughts on Godzilla versus Kong before we wrap up here? Do you guys like rate these or? Oh, we rate them. Oh, don't oh. worry, baby. That's the okay, next part. Give me the scale. Outline the scale for me. Well, see, everyone has a different scale. So you use whatever measurement system you want, and then I'll explain mine, and you can explain yours. <laughs> you okay. might just just make up like how many jelly beans out of a thousand would you give it, or something? Because <laughs> how at many this point, jelly? Probably give it three lime jelly beans and one strawberry. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and what's that equivalent to on AJ's grading st- uh, scale? Oh. What's, the, what's the American grading scale version of that? You know. Wait, should I do it to AJ's or to the problem with the American grading scale is it's it's really just like five to ten or like fifty to a hundred. You know. Yeah, I think that's mostly right. And uh, the thing is, is I think there's a pretty broad range in in failure that. Uh, that the American grading scale captures well. Like you got to you got to be pretty bad to get a 5. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's go American grading scale where Oh yes. 5 oh. is just you blew it. You're That's you know, a that's a 50% F. You should not make. Yeah, that's true. You could get like a 30% F. So Yeah. Uh, maybe we should do percentages then. <laughs> what? Well, oh, that's actually I've I've like in response to all the delicious the feedback. Hate mail. The hate mail. The death I, threat. Uh, I do my scoring system, but I also put the the percentage because that's Ooh. that's how I think of it. Mm. So all right, get on with this painful grading get scale. Get get on with it. The Monty Python okay, thing. You know what? I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna go because this is how I like to grade things. Dave Portnoy style. You know, zero to ten figure skating, where ten it ten almost doesn't exist. 
It's perfection. It's exactly. perfection. Because once you've seen perfection, how do you see it again? You know, you like, how do, what if you see something better, you know? Right. So, okay, that's how I'm going with this. Decimals included. Uh, mm. I would say Kong versus Godzilla. This is coming from someone that literally watched probably like 15 movies in his whole life. Mm, I'm going to say 7-1. As AJ thinks, the illustrious critic uh, gives this movie a 70%, 7.0. No kidding. Yep. Yep. Oh my. Okay. Wow. How's that feel to be in sync with? Wow. Yeah. That's pretty exciting. We we match up here. Yeah. I am. Yeah. Uh, I'm. I'm tickled. Guys, settle down. Jeez. Yeah. What is Sam? What's your What's Sam? your take? Yeah, Sam. All right. I I don't. I refuse to go and use AJ's grading scale. I just go on zero to ten. It's pure emotion and guttural instinct. <laughs> I'm giving this eight out of ten. Fighting Godzilla's versus Kong's. Wow. For the facts of the plot doesn't matter. The action's super cool and it's really well done. And that's all I care about for this movie. And that's what it is. So that's what it gets. 80 fighting Kongs and Godzillas. You know, that's that's respectable. I get it. It's like this movie knows what it's doing. It knows what it is. Outside of the monster fighting, it just I, I feel like it that's way too high for for a movie like this with with two hours this is there's it's basically an unjustifiable use of two hours in, fi- <laughs> <laughs> in film <laughs> like, like but it's okay fun. okay let me reword it then i give it an eight out of ten for the monster type movie verse in terms of overall movie goodness i would give it more what you're saying like a seven out of ten Right. And that's, and you know, we, when we reviewed Bad Trip recently, I had this difficulty in like, how do you rate movies that are made specifically to be what they are? Like, you mm-hmm. can't, you, like, you don't look at Godzilla v. Kong and be like, oh, how does this match up to Citizen Kane or something, you know? Mm-hmm. And they're like, this is a very different, it's this very specific genre, like campy, like action film. And people love this stuff. And, you know, if, if you're like, well, how would you rate this if you're specifically talking about the genre? I think the eight would make sense. But, yeah, like no one has like a universal like there's just a bunch of different ways to rate movies and yeah, I, I don't really know what to where to where I'm going with this. It's just I, I have a difficult time. I think you need to rate within each other's category, you know. It's yeah, I think you have to, right. Yeah. There's no way to compare. She can feel his heartbeat. He's dying. There's nothing we can do to restart his heart. We'd have to produce a charge big enough to light up Las Vegas for a week. Do you guys want to guess the budget for this movie and then the box office? Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah. But first of all, are movies with actors more or less expensive than movies that have a ton of CGI like this? I would guess that CGI is less expensive. Well, but they did both here. So they have like a pretty, they have a couple of A-listers almost and, uh, well, maybe B-listers, but, um, and then a ton of, of, the CGI would be definitely more expensive here, but the actors add a couple mil for sure okay. let's go, go ahead jacob take a wild guess at what you think the budget was first okay let me close out the wikipedia page here um, <laughs> um i'm gonna just say again I don't really have a frame of reference but uh let's go with 270 million whoa as as a budget <laughs> a, quarter, a quarter billion dollars i mean some movies do that though so that's like fine I just I, have no idea. I, <laughs> jacob's like I, 300 trillion dollars he's like dr evil with putting his pinky up <laughs> okay All right, I, I don't know I'd, I'd guess like I don't know. I'd, I'd guess 90 million, 100 million. <laughs> okay. Very widely different guesses. Okay, from that's YouTube. only, yeah, that's one third of what I guess. So, come on. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's in the middle. The budget, according to Google, is $180 million. Okay. Whoa. All right. Now, that's huge. All right, folks. I would give the top one to Jacob on that one. <laughs> yeah. No, Jacob was right. Okay. I mean, no, let's go ahead right, and I went over. Price is right. Yeah. I'd be out. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Um, let's go ahead and guess domestic box office then as of April 18th. I'd, I'd say 200 million. I bet it made its money. Just just domestically. Yeah. Just domestically. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with 312 million. 312 million. And what do you you say? I I said 200, but I kind of want to, it's only been out for a weekend. That's true. So I, I, I guess I'll couch that down to like, 
60 million. Final answers. So 60 million and then three, three, twelve, three, twelve. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, domestic box office was 80.5 million. Oh, wow. and, but overseas it's made 309.7 million. Oh Ooh. shit. Look at that. We both got something to take home there. Yeah. Got little, little trophies. <laughs> oh, <congratulations. laughs> so overall, not too bad. You know, they made their money back and then some. Oh, although not, and this I mean, is just one weekend. They're going to make like probably double that by the time. Yeah. I mean, it's good for them. They've doubled well, it. Yeah. And this is like one of the first movies to come out, like kind of at the waning days of the pandemic where movie theaters are starting to open up and people want to get out of the house and dad's looking at the newspaper. He's like, oh, we're going to go see Godzilla v. Kong. <laughs> that is exactly what I saw. Last night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, so are these numbers strictly box office? It's just what's on Google. <laughs> okay. Because because like it seems like, you know, box office would really be hurting right now. Yeah. And we've, in some of the movies that we, re- we reviewed, we've had tough times with these numbers because a lot of them are like direct to, sh- to stream or um, direct to uh, direct to to rent. Yeah. What do you call it? Yeah. But direct to rent. And so like they, they must have some way of calculating there. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure it'll increase just more like AJ said over the next couple of weeks and or months. So good on them because that was pretty entertaining yeah and we'll get godzilla v kong two in like a year and a half or something and it'll be their grandkids fighting yeah yeah well i i I was googling around and it looks like they might have an idea for a a son of kong movie so (laughs) (laughs) of course they do yeah of course of course so aj would you like to propose your question yeah jacob the question that we like to or i like to ask guests now is uh, is there any piece of entertainment or media movie whatever that you've enjoyed lately that you would like to recommend to the audience? Oh, okay. Well, I clearly didn't see that coming. Um, <laughs> yeah, I should I should start prepping people a little bit. Sometimes I do, but I, I just didn't have the time. This is kind of like a, a hot ones thing. Like it's that camera, that camera. Yeah, well, you can take your time because we could just edit you. Oh, oh deliberating. No, you have one minute. Leave it all in. Out. Of what I've watched recently, all of which I think is interesting enough to at least give a try, um, Seaspiracy on Netflix is quite interesting. And oh, I, I heard stuff about it. Yeah, I mean, it's jarring. It's, you know, definitely got the documentary vibes going where it really wants to pull on your heartstrings kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's very interesting to see, I guess, how uh, global fishing works and what it's doing to the earth. But I feel like it's not a super picker upper. Am I right? <laughs> not really but at least this guy is like doing something and it kind of shows you ways that you can help but um that's interesting lennox hill is really good also if you haven't seen that it's like a reality series following uh some doctors in a hospital in new york so it's pretty good oh, neat. very cool neat. good rex good rex well jacob thank you so much for being on this wonderful podcast uh aj what would you recommend that we be watching next on the next episode uh next week we'll be watching the movie snow piercer well jacob thank you for oh wait did you already say thank you to jacob <laughs> <laughs> i'm just gonna let that run for as long as i can to see what would happen <laughs> As always, thank you everybody for listening to the Video Lab podcast. If you'd like to be a guest on our podcast, be sure to email us at the Video Lab podcast at gmail.com. You can find my review for this movie and other movies at my blog, asajthinks.com. And be sure to rate and subscribe to the podcast wherever you are listening. Until next time, see ya. Peace.